this morning. So we're happy to be able to come together and share as we do this morning. And what a beautiful morning, huh? Mm -hmm. yes. Wow, I can't beat this. It's doing really great. Thank you, Lord. We really appreciate all that. Anyway, before we begin, and welcome everyone who is with us today, whether you visit or wherever you might be, and pray that God may bless us in our service of worship. Before we begin, I always say, God loves you, and so do I. It's your choice. If you want to share with your neighbor, God loves you, and so do I. Come on, <laughs> Unfortunately, the weather yesterday was not like the day. It was unpredictable, so the flea market, etc., had to be canceled. It will be next Saturday. The Lord willing, the creek don't rise and it's almost shut. It's going to rain so hard. We'll hopefully have the flea market next Saturday, July the 16th. Also, I want to make sure uh, that you realize on Saturday the 23rd, you'll have the matinee from the sight and sound of Joseph. We've got those films. We're going to have that matinee on Saturday afternoon. And you can some run runner up also on Saturday afternoon. It's a wonderful show. Maybe you saw Joseph, maybe you didn't, but it's fantastic. The great show. And we'll be doing that matinee on the 23rd afternoon in the certification. Uh, let's see. Oh, next week, or this coming week, uh, will be the next luncheon. So next Sunday, we're asking you to get your, I mean, next week, next we're asking you to get anything you want to put for the event. In the pond, we will be taking the lunches and the goods and the clothing and everything else that we do every, every month to help our, our homeless people and as well as any homeless people in, as a part of the uh, program over there. I think I covered everything. I hope. Okay. Lord. For Scott Christman, his unfortunate problem with one of his kidneys that was healed, and now all the other kidneys is now infected, and we pray for Scott's health. The Sandra Moyer, who had a knee replacement this past week, and pray for her recovery. For well, Axel Rivera, a young eight year old who all of a sudden has encountered some serious airway problems, and so we pray for that living God. And for Buzz Winslow, who has some near health problems as he had encountered. For Devin Zook, who had foot surgery and is now recovering and is doing rather well. David Dowder, dealing with cancer. David Maltini, dealing with cancer. Al Rennier, dealing with ammunition and weakness. Randy Go, she had an knee replacement. She's recovering and she's also doing very well. And Diane Fox, uh, who's the daughter of John and Eleanor, was, it had had some medical testing necessary for some problems she had. And for Jim Kelly, he had uh, 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 the, 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 the shot in his no, the shot, the shot in his brain. Shot, whatever you call it. <laughs> but anyway, it, it's a serious thing, and he's going to have to surgery. And I hope something can be done to help him out. And for Sandra Brown, who unfortunately not too long ago just lost her daughter. Let's bow our heads to the prayer. Lord God, we lift up to these persons we have mentioned Scott Christman, Sandra Moyer, Axel Rivera, Buzz Wenzel, Devin Zook, David Dowder, David Maltini, Al Rennier, Randy Boat. Diane Fox, Jeff Pelwick, and Sandra Brown. Lord, you us up to you these persons and patients we have mentioned you this morning. And as always, we lift up to you any and all who may be sick or ill or distraught of mind. Do with them, Lord. Help us through the power of presence, your guidance, your strength, your love, and your healing. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's be care for our morning.
Praise the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let us pray. Our soul waits for Adonai. He is our help and our shield. Our heart rejoices in him because we trust him in his holy name. Let your loving kindness, Lord, be upon us as we have waited for you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. This morning's response and reading is titled, It's Life of Service. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always be yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. We continue to remember before our labor from the love and endure. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them. The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose. And if we are God's field, we are God's field. I lay really down the builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds. No one can lay any foundation other than the one already made, which is the first time. If any man builds on this foundation, he will silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw. If what he has still survived, he will receive his reward. If Prayer is important, but a little story about prayer. 
three pastors were in the parking lot waiting for the building for a meeting. And right there where they were was a telephone pole with a telephone guy working up in the pole. The three pastors were discussing prayer. First one said, the most important thing you can do is be on your knees when you pray. Uh, no, the second person said, I'm not sure that's the way it should be. Uh, I think if you if you just simply lift your hand up to heaven and praise the Lord and pray, that's the way it should be. And the third person said, I'm not, not guys, just go through all that. Put your hands together, bow your head, and pray. Well, the guy on the telephone pulled up on hat. He heard all this and said, Hey guys, I want to tell you something. The best experience I ever had in prayer was when I hang upside down from a telephone pole. <laughs> very serious and very important. And so this morning we pause a moment to offer prayer to an awesome God. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Almighty oh, God, once again, thank you. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for the many things that have been possible for all of us. Whoever we are, if we just stop a moment and listen and think, there are many things we need to be grateful for. And today, the day of Lord, we're especially thankful because we've come to the parking lot, come to serve you, we come to praise you, and we thank you so much that we come together on this occasion. We worship and bless and glorify your holy name. Especially, Lord, we thank you for Pastor Rebecca, who's come to share the message with us this morning, and we look forward, and I'm sure she will reach into our hearts in a very meaningful way. And so, Lord, indeed, we can even look beyond all of this and say, thank you, Lord, for those many blessings, and we could just continue to number them again and again. But we also know, Lord, that the challenges of life continue. So because and if and when we can look and remember and be thankful for a blessing, that will be a source. That will be a hope to help us to deal with those challenges and difficulties that face us on a daily basis. And so, Lord, help us to put it all together. Remember to the final step is to have you in our life, you in our heart, to be the guiding force every day of our life. Lord, we pray all these things today in your name and pray together now as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory.
Psalm 25, verse 110. Oh my God, in me I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Yet, let none that wait for these be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. For thee I wait all day long. Be mindful of thy mercy, O Lord, and of thy steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to thy steadfast love, remember me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. The epistle lesson is found in Colossians verse 1, chapter 1. And so from that day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding to lead a life worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. May God bless the reading and hearing of his holy word. <laughs>
the beautiful prayer to breathe on me, breath of God. I just feel like the breath of God is breathing on us today. We give thanks for that, even as we lift up the gospel for today, which is from the 10th chapter of Luke. It's a pretty familiar uh, so I'm just going to ask you of the good that you just ask God to breathe on us in a way that this is refreshing, that this is a message for us today. The Good Samaritan 38, verse 25. Behold, the Lord has stood up and put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? The lawyer answered, you, can, you probably know this, you're welcome to say it with me. You shall love the Lord your God, believe you, with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus answered him, I see what answer those that just joined in on that. You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But the lawyer, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So, likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. When he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took him. He gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think? Prove to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers. The lawyer said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said, go and do likewise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now for those of us that are children of God, or people who might even call ourselves children, uh, I have a little message here. Uh, I'm just curious, has anyone ever played hide and seek? Raise your hand. Okay, and who's good at hide and seek? I'm looking for people in your cars too because I see you're hiding. So if you want to ever play hide and seek, you're welcome to come on. And if you're at home, I know some folks are on uh, Facebook and others are on Zoom today. Thank you. <laughs> we have a bit of a delay. <laughs> All right. For those of you that like to play, catch that. There's a set of keys up here. <laughs> yeah, so hide and seek. There's one set of keys up here. You can do that. Uh, but there, there's something unusual about me. I'm wondering if you can figure out what it is. We're going to walk around a little. I know you're looking at me saying you're always unusual. Yeah. Right? So. <laughs> Find anything unusual today. Nothing Thank you. 
vine. Jesus is the one who makes us right. Jesus is the one who, when we fall short, gives us that forgiveness and the ability to stand up again in the eyes of God. So already the Lord is just a little bit off balance. The lawyer said, who is my neighbor? One deal. So you guys know, right? Who's your neighbor? You know the person in the name next to you. If you don't introduce yourself, <laughs> if you do know the person next to you or in a car behind you, uh, you can introduce yourself. If you can't see the people online, hopefully you'll have a chance to follow up at another time. But sometimes, like these fun little toys, our neighbors get hidden and we don't see them. Now, this guy was laying in a gutter. Everybody could see what was going on, but they didn't want to see it. I'll have to confess, there have been times I just don't even want to watch the news anymore. Does anyone in that boat with me get kind of tired of, of seeing the news? And they're just mean. I hear you. And I just want to, I want to cover my eyes. I want to cover my ears. I just want to turn it off. I want to go do something fun, like a blueberry festival. I want to go to Canola's or something like that. But the reality is, watch a game. Well, yeah, the Phillies have been doing okay this week. <laughs> That's not always a good diversion. The reality is, Jesus says, you need to see your neighbor. And not only see your neighbor with your eyes and hear your neighbor with your ears, and you close to your neighbor instead of changing the channel. It says, I want you to get close to your neighbor close enough to touch. The priest did not do it. The Levite did not do it. They knew the scripture, but they did not get close enough to touch. It was the Samaritan. Folks don't like Samaritans. They're not supposed to touch each other. They were supposed to cross on the other side of the street, but this one didn't get the memo. This one saw another human being and said, this is not acceptable. I went over to that other human being and recognized that they had rooms, and I bet they were kind of ugly to look at. It might have even made the snag a little bit squeamish. Now, some of you are nurses out here, I know that you can put up with this stuff. But most of us, you see that kind of thing, and you just want to turn your eyes or, or look away, or certainly not touch it. But this American cleaned out the wound and didn't stop there either. They put the person. That had been beaten up on their own animal. They took out these teeth. <laughs> they must have had them on their wrist. Right? And pulled up their vehicle and said, You can come in. I want to tell you a story that was in the news this week. And yes, I watched it even though it was hard. There's another violent experience. Folks were just trying to go to a July 4th parade, right? You know what I learned? was there are so many people, beautiful stories about neighbors. I'm just going to tell you about one of them, and it's not Gordy. You know that last Monday was July 4th, and there are a lot of people at, at three. And you know that some of the folks in an economically secure suburb, a Jewish suburb of Chicago, uh, had just started afraid when the unimaginable happened. And there was something that sounded like fire tactics, but it wasn't. Well, there's a woman named Amy Holloman. Her store was open that day on Main Street. She's a person with stationery and paper. And she heard those sounds. She wasn't quite sure what it was until, and I, I'll just quote here. She recalled seeing the fear in their faces as they went running by. What she says is, I had them all come in. I closed the doors, I turned off the lights, I told everyone to get in the back room, and I told them all to stay in the back. Two of the people that came in were interviewed, Yui Ross and Jessica Morales, were among those who fled the, to the paper store, it's the name of the store. Ross had been marching in the parade with the League of Women Voters and was familiar with the store. Morales was standing nearby with her husband and two young children. Jessica Morales says it was probably the scariest thing I've ever experienced. But Amy Holloman, that store manager, was wonderful. 
said Ross. This is the part that just screamed out from God and the Holy Spirit. The paper source manager was back to work on Tuesday. She said she wanted to stay home, but she couldn't because she knew that the community would have to go through this team together. And she said she was glad she didn't go back to work on Tuesday because people stopped by to check on her and to say thank you to her. And then get this. Amy Holloman said she kept reflecting back on her indigenous roots and how her Cheyenne name means opening the door for others. My grandmother, she said, who passed in 1999, gave me this name. And I kept thinking about her when I was opening this door for people to come in. Amy Holloman said, I'm glad I was here to open my doors. I'm glad I was here to help people because I have been in a position where I needed help and people opened doors for me. There is the neighbor. There is the challenge that Jesus encourages us. In fact, Jesus commands us to go therefore and do likewise. This woman lived up to the name that her grandmother had given her before 23 years or more before. We've been given a name in our baptism. Our name is Christian. We also have the challenge of living up to that name. And it's a tall word. And it does mean opening doors, even when we're scared. Even when there's scary stuff going on outside. Jesus encourages us not always to shut our eyes. Sometimes to open our eyes and open our doors. Jesus encourages us not only to celebrate together and have flea markets and blueberry festivals and watch fireworks together, but also to come together in these hard moments and to keep coming back together, to cry together, to try and figure it out together, just to be together, even if we don't have the words that we need. As Amy Holloman said, sometimes. I was the one that needed help. This time, she was the one who was able to give that sanctuary. When Jesus asked who was the neighbor, you know what the lawyer said. The one who showed mercy. The only way we know to show mercy is because Christ showed it first. Christ showed mercy to that lawyer, letting the lawyer kind of figure it out. Christ shows mercy to us every time we do turn and walk on the other side of the road and gives us another chance to ask for forgiveness and to try again to be a good neighbor. Jesus shows us mercy by going through the greatest pain of all for our sake so that we can be healed and we can be bandaged and we can have an opportunity to be strengthened and renewed and have new life and go forward in his name. Jesus says, go and do likewise. Isn't that amazing? Kind of like those rubber balls that you girls have back there. This gives us a way to bounce back, to play together, to interact with one another. <laughs> Sometimes they do go rolling out. <laughs> and that's okay. Isn't it wonderful? And Jesus gives us an opportunity to heal up and to reach out and to open doors. And when we're the ability to receive that care, that mercy, and that compassion, this is not a burden. This is our blessing as Christians in Jesus' name. So the question is can we stand up to the test? <coughs> Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for hearing our praises today. Thank you for feeding us abundantly in your word. Thank you for this community of neighbors. Thank you for your challenge in the world around us. I'm sorry. But we know that you look upon us with mercy and you give us the ability to have compassion on others, whether we're on the receiving or the giving end. Sometimes it's both. Lord God, help us to hide and seek to find our neighbors, to 
build relationships. Maybe it's playing cats together, uh, but maybe it's cuddling together in scary times. Whatever that test is, we know that you're with us and we know that in the Holy Spirit gives us the strength to go and do likewise. So please guide our steps, guide our hearts, guide our lives. We should pray in your precious name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
so much for coming and sharing with us this morning. Thank you, Pastor Knox, for a fantastic message. I hope all you neighbors will remember that because we are neighbors. And of course, we pray God's blessing upon her in her continued service as she served in Jamaican capacities as a person at the hospital and in the church and a, a, a woman of many missions. And we pray God's blessing be with her in the year ahead. Thank you so much, Pastor Rebecca, for the same time. Well, so let's do it. I wish you well in the week ahead. I pray God's blessing with you. Have a safe journey home. I'm going to head to home. <laughs> I'm going to sneak out before she gets here. Anyway, God bless you all. And guess what? I'll see you next week. Just uh, I'm looking for some help here today. We were prepared for a uh, a festival here yesterday, and I made a bunch of soup, and it's not something I want to freeze. So uh, I'm looking for donations. I have about 30 quarts of chicken corn noodle soup. Come on down here and help me out if you can. Take some home, give it to friends. Uh, I'll take any donation you give me to, to buy goods to make some for next week. Uh, I also have a, uh, a cooler full of mint tea. I was raised around the, the farm here, and the tea that I drank growing up was mint tea. That's free of charge. I have a cooler and cups here, so uh, stop down and uh, help yourself and help me out if you would. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.